Hi, in this video I'm going to be doing some work with this Raspberry Pi 4 that I just got. This is it here. I put it in a 3D printed case that I just printed on my printer. Uh, this is the 2 gigabyte version. Uh, one of the things I've read a lot about online is cooling with these. So I've never used fans or heat sinks on my Raspberry Pis in the past. I've always thought they were completely unnecessary. Except when I got this one, I started to have second thoughts because you touch it here, it is really warm to the touch on these uh, on these jacks on the side. So those are warm to the touch. The whole thing's probably hot. You know, it just feels warm on the case there. Um, so I thought I'd do some tests and, and see what's going on with this thing. I have already upgraded to the firmware, to the firmware version that's supposed to run cooler. Uh, you can see I've got several windows set up here. Um, this one here is showing a Raspberry Pi monitoring daemon. Updates about every 10 seconds. It says the uh, temperature is around 55 Celsius. Um, this one I'm going to use to run benchmarks. So this one here is showing us the current uh, CPU throttling. This is a bitmap. You can kind of look up here. You see there's some bitmap stuff that will tell you what these bits mean. So this um, upper bit here probably means that throttling has occurred. Or, uh, well, it's probably this one. Frequency cap has occurred. It's probably that first two. Um, if we end up frequency capping, we'll see a two down here in the lowest spot. Down here, we are seeing the current CPU frequency. So it's currently running at 600 megahertz. And down here, we have the current temperature times 1,000. So this is actually 56.478 degrees. It should be the same number as what's reported on here. Those th These things probably sample them at slightly different times. So it's at idle. It's currently about, uh, what is it, about 56 degrees Celsius. Uh, let's give it some load and see what happens. So I started up, uh, we don't want one thread. We want four threads. There we go. So I've started up a uh, benchmark that does prime numbers. I've started up four threads. If we look at top, we can see the CPU is pretty busy, 397%. Uh, load is starting to go up so the cpu cer certainly loaded not throttled or anything yet and the speed went up to uh, 1.5 gigahertz that's what it's currently configured and the temperature is going up uh, we're currently at you know 68 degrees celsius and climbing i have a gut feeling we should be able to get up to about 82 so let's just let it sit here and get hot Okay, so we can see a 2 over here, which means frequency capping has occurred. We should be capped at 1.5 gigahertz. We haven't been throttled yet. If we were throttled, I think we would see either a 6 or a 4 in this position. And we can let it sit here. I don't think it's going to throttle until it gets to 85 Celsius. Um, I suppose I could get a heat gun out and point it at the thing and heat it up a little more, but that seems like an artificial attempt. I've done this a few times already today and I couldn't get it past about 82.5. So the question is, do you need a fan? Um, I think this proves that you really, at least without using any of the other per peripherals on the board, just doing uh, compute, I don't think you absolutely need a fan. Uh, maybe you would if you were in a warmer ambient environment, but I've got this inside of a relatively tight case and it's still it's still only hovering about 82 degrees and this is with the cpu completely maxed out um, this doesn't doesn't seem that bad to me if i touch it you know it is it is it is hot um, you know you can feel the heat coming through the case uh, this case is printed in petg it's withstanding these temperatures just fine you know that 82 celsius is actually on the chip so by the time we get up here to the the case itself, the, the case is not um, at 82 Celsius, it's not melting the case or anything like that. So it really doesn't seem to me like I need to add a fan to this, but I'm going to add one anyway and go through some of the options. So let me take and swap this top out. This one on. 
we will just hook it up. This is a 5 volt Sunon fan. I will hook it up here to the GPIOs on the 5 volt and the ground pins. I don't know if you can hear that, but it is uh, quite loud. This fan, I'm not sure exactly the RPM. I would say somewhere in the you know 6,000 to 9,500 range is what these little fans run at. Um, but let's see if this thing cools the CPU down. Well, we're already, I mean, we're dropping fast. Um, we're, over here it's saying 66, over here it's saying 72. Um, let's see next time this uh, browser, ref yeah, down to 66. I would imagine we are going to take this all the way down to um, probably below below the 55 Celsius we were idling at. Probably. Okay, so we seem to be bouncing around now at about 50 to 52 Celsius. I'm surprised we didn't get it to cool down a little more than that. I thought with this thing, you know, the way it's blowing air out of there, I thought we could have cooled it more, but uh, maybe if we'd had a heat sink. Anyway, this is perfectly fine at 50 Celsius. That's pretty cool. But uh, you'll notice the fan is noisy. Um, I don't like a fan that's that noisy. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but it's, it's really quite noisy. Uh, so one thing we could do, we could try hooking it up to the Pi's 3.3 volt. So I'm going to do that. We'll see what happens. Yeah, it's still running. It's quite a bit quieter now. Temperature is going to go up because we've got less airflow, of course. So while we're waiting for the temperature to go back up and, and enter a stable point, let's talk about whether or not this is a good idea. Uh, so what I've done here is I've powered this off of the Raspberry Pi's 3.3 volt regulator. Uh, that regulator is for powering components on the board. It's not really meant to have a fan hooked up to it. Um, fans are kind of noisy electrical motor devices. It doesn't seem like this is a great idea. It's still stable around our 50 to 52 Celsius, um, even with the fan noticeably slowed down running on 3.3 volts. So certainly the super noisy full 5 volt operation Clearly, we didn't need that. So as I said before, I really don't like running it off the 3.3 volt regulator. I'd really run it, rather run it off of the 5 volt regulator. So what I've done here is I've put some resistors. These are 275 ohm resistors in parallel, which should give us about 37.5 ohms of resistance. It should drop that fan down to a much lower speed while hooked up to the 5 volt. So let's go over here. So it does seem to me like it's even um, slower than the uh, than it was when hooked up to the 3.3 with these resistors. Um, as I said before, I think this is a much safer way to go. I will look up later and put some probes on this and, and get an idea of exactly how much voltage um, is coming off of this. So our temperature has climbed a little bit. I don't know if that climb was just solely while I uh, had the fan unplugged while I was swapping this around let's see um, let's see us get back down to a stable point so we seem to be holding it about 55 and a half um, fan is nice and quiet it's not really blowing much air but it doesn't need to blow much air so I think uh, if you have a two wire or a three wire fan I think doing this like this with a couple resistors to drop the voltage going into the fan I think that's a fine idea um, resistors are not getting hot not burning myself touching the resistors that's good uh, so that's probably what I would do for a cheap solution. But I do want to try something else. So what I have here is a four-wire Delta fan. Um, I got this fan at DigiKey. I looked on their parametric search for a four-wire, five-volt, 30-millimeter uh, fan. This is the one that I came up with. This fan, I think, is pretty awesome. So it has four wires. The red is 5 volt, the black is ground, the blue one is PWM that you can use to control speed, and the yellow is an RPM uh, feedback so you can know how fast it's spinning. So what we're going to do is we're going to control this with PWM, pulse width modulation. So what we're going to do is we're going to send some pulses out on this blue line. Um, and those pulses are going to be at a fixed frequency of 25 kilohertz, but we're going to vary the width of those pulses, and the wider the pulses are, 
um, the faster our fan is going to spin. So if, if the pulses are on all the time, you know, 100%, it's going to spin at 100%. If the pulses are off all the time, it's going to zero, it's going to not spin at all. So I'm going to use a library called PyGPIOD um, to do this. I need to sudo that. Um, and it will do the hardware PWM for us. Hang on, let me try that. GPIOD. So then I've got this pigs command, which is a command line uh, thing to PyGPIOD. So this is going to do, say do hardware PWM um, on pin 18. GPIO 18 is where I hook the PWM line to at 25 kilohertz. And 1 million means it's going to be on 100% of the time. So it is spinning. It's spinning fast. It's blowing a lot of air. It's a noisy little fan. Um, and I'm also going to go over here and see if I can monitor the RPM. So I wrote a little thing here to monitor the RPM. Uh, fan for pin.py. So yeah, it says the RPM is just under 10,000. Well, there it's a little above 10,000. Now if I stick my finger in here, it ought to slow down a little. Yeah. So it's that's giving us our RPM feedback. From the fan, I think this is pretty cool because you can programmatically know that your fan is spinning. You can know how fast it's spinning. Um, if the fan failed and the rotor locked, um, you would know that the fan was stuck. Um, plus, you can also control the speed. Now, at 100%, it's going to cool this thing down. Uh, let's see, we're currently at 58.9, 57. It's going to go back down to that usual 55 degrees Celsius or so we were looking at. Uh, this thing sounds like you're sitting in a server room. It is a noisy fan. But let's slow it down. 500,000 should be about half. It's noticeably quieter now. Okay, so the fan is noticeably quieter now. Um, it's actually been running for a while at this point because I ran out of uh, memory in the camera and I had to pause the camera, download all the videos, clear some space. Uh, so it's been sitting here for about half an hour running with a PWM value of 500,000. Executing the load. Yeah, we're still doing the load. We've still got, uh, what, our 400% or so on that thread. So certainly a PWM of 500,000 is great. Let's see if we can go down a little bit lower. Let's try um, 350,000. This should be about one third or so. So it should be even slower now. What is the RPM? Yeah, the RPM just dropped from about 6,500 to about 5,000 RPM. Um, still feel air coming out of it, though not nearly as much air. And let's just let it sit here for a little while. Okay, so it's been settling for a while. Uh, it looks like it's getting about 55 Celsius. So we went up a couple degrees by slowing the fan down. That's not surprising. So we can also turn the fan completely off doing this. Let's set it down to zero. Yeah, see there the fan has stopped. The RPM, I think my RPM program just keeps repeating the uh, last value um, if it's not sensing anything. So it's something for me to fix in that uh, software. Uh, but anyway, let's let's see what the lowest value it'll spin up is. So actually 100,000, that's actually like 10%, and that is enough to make it spin. It's only spinning at about 1,500 RPM. And let's see just what that does for temperature. We'll just let it sit here and settle for a bit. So it's hovering here around 65, 66 degrees Celsius, 67 Celsius, somewhere in that range. Um, and this is at a very slow speed. This is 1600 RPM, a PWM of only 10%. So even running the fan at a very slow speed is enough to bring it down from that 82 Celsius we were getting before down to about 66 Celsius. So it took about 15, 16 Celsius off the temperature. Certainly a very manageable temperature, and this gives you a nice quiet fan. Anyhow, this Delta fan, this is my preferred fan. I'm going to use it in any projects where I'm at all concerned about temperature. 
I'll probably use it on the OctoPie that goes on my 3D printer, for example, since you know it's a little bit warm over there by the 3D printer already. Um, the things I like about this fan, first of all, it is only seven millimeters thick. So compare it to the Sunon. This was a 10 millimeter Sunon. Um, seven millimeters thick means that if I had a normal full case on this, I could easily squeeze that fan inside of the case. Um, you've also got the PWM, which lets you easily control the fan speed. And you have an RPM feedback, which lets you easily measure the RPM if you want to. The disadvantage is to use the PWM or the RPM, you do tie up a couple of GPIOs. The other thing about this fan is it has very thin wires that come out of it. Uh, these things were actually a little bit hard for me to crimp. I had to both crimp and solder uh, because the DuPont terminals that I crimped it into, the wires were so small that it would kind of pull out. Um, so the next thing I was curious about, this does get up to about 82 Celsius at full load with no fan on it. Um, I put that in a PTG case. We showed the PTG did not melt. What if I printed a PLA case? PLA will start to deform around 60 Celsius. Uh, so let's put that Pi in this case, take the fan off of it, and see if a Raspberry Pi 4 with no fan at full load is hot enough to melt a 3D printed PLA case. Okay, I've placed the Raspberry Pi 4 inside of the PLA case. It is now running the four thread uh, prime computation load. The temperature is rising. I'm just going to leave the camera on here on this thing for a while and we'll see how hot it gets and whether it melts the PLA case. So I've had this sitting here for about an hour while I've been editing videos, um, running with the uh, four thread CPU benchmark. The thing is hot. But it's not at all deformed. It's not even soft. Case is absolutely fine. No problem whatsoever. Um, so that shows you can put this Raspberry Pi in a PLA case and run it at full CPU load and it will not damage the case in the least. You know, you could maybe get the thing a little bit hotter by running some video, but even at that, it's supposed to throttle at 85 degrees Celsius, so I think it's probably going to top out around 85 Celsius. Right now it's running about 82 Celsius, didn't hurt the case. So when you're talking that 82, 85 degrees Celsius, you're talking, you know, on the CPU, direct CPU temperature. So the temperature that we actually have at the case itself is going to be much less because you've got that air gap in between the CPU and the case. Um, even down here on the bottom side where there's not that much gap between um, the case and the bottom of the PC board, it's still, you know, it was warm, but none of this is deformed at all. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.